My family has been haunted by a spirit for nearly 13 years. By Kyle Harrison Like clockwork, I've come to expect its shrill tones groaning in the night. It starts soft, the way an infant might wail if abandoned on the street. Then it rises and rings out through the trees. overcoming them and snaking its way to our home. Eventually, it settles into a repetitive high-pitched scream, the kind that a woman might make if she were stabbed to death. When we first moved here and heard it, Malcolm assumed it had to be some prankster kids trying to initiate us with some local hazing custom. This property is remote though, and spotting intruders would be easy. Plus, the disembodied screams were enough to make anyone feel on edge. It couldn't be the work of truant kids. When it didn't happen again after that first time, we assumed it was just a fluke. But that second Halloween, we realized we definitely had a haunting on our hands. What do you suppose it wants? I remember asking nervously. Dad and Malcolm wisely boarded up the windows and bolted the doors. We were sure such simple physical precautions could protect us from the supernatural. And somehow it did. We stayed awake all night listening to the wailing. The noises got louder. Sometimes we heard the spirit bang against the house like it was trying to get inside. I think we prayed all night. I know that none of us got any sleep. Gradually though, as the years passed, somehow we became accustomed to the ghost. We began to understand that as long as we didn't do it any harm, it would do us none as well. We did consider moving and we came close too, but then the ghost dissuaded us from that path. One time, as we prepared for the yearly haunting, we were discussing the possibility of buying a property on the opposite side of town. Would we have to mention the ghost to any prospective buyers? Mom asked. Malcolm seemed to think that we should, but Dad was against it. If we say a word, we'll never get out of here. Then as the clock struck midnight, I realized something. Where's the ghost? I asked. None of us said a word, only listening to the wind and waiting for the screaming. But instead, we were greeted with utter silence. Dad went to the window and peered out. Must be taking a night off, he joked as he began to raise the blinds. Wait, maybe it's a trick, Malcolm warned. Dad complied with his request and we sat still for another hour. Still nothing. Maybe the ghost moved on, I suggested nervously. I don't know why, but the silence was scarier than anything we had experienced before. As we looked out toward the property, the only thing worth noting was a mist of black smoke wafting across the night. I'm going to bed, Mom said. Dad joined her. Suddenly, all our preparations seemed unnecessary. But I didn't go to bed. Neither did Malcolm. Something felt very wrong. The ghost is normally around the barn, right? He whispered once our parents were sound asleep. Yeah, near the creek. I was still watching the smoke. It snaked across the sky almost with a mind of its own. I knew he was planning to go investigate, and like any younger sibling, I followed. The air was still that night, our traditional jack-o'-lanterns on display at the edge of our fence line. But still, not a whisper from the ghost. We were almost at the barn. Malcolm lit a lantern, peering into the old building. But there was nothing there. Disappointed, we returned to the house and he remarked, I I guess I never thought I'd say this, but I miss the ghost. Did you leave the door open? 
I asked as we got close to the front porch. Malcolm pursed his lips together and then dashed inside. He dropped the lamp in a panic and began to wail. His agony sounded worse than the ghost. I came inside slowly, looking into my parents' bedroom. They were lying there, seemingly sound asleep. But a closer inspection showed me that something evil had crossed over them. Their bodies were torn apart at the chest cavity with a diagonal slash, and there was dark black smoke coming out of them. I collapsed to the ground, shocked as the smoke escaped outside the window and disappeared. Malcolm was trying to resuscitate them, but I could tell from the wounds and the blood loss, it was pointless. That was three years ago. Since then, the ghost has returned and Malcolm and I have done our best to keep things together while we survive. The mortgage and other debts have made it impossible to leave. I've come to understand that the ghost was never here as a threat, but as a warning. When it screams, it tells us that we are safe from a greater evil. Perhaps it even protects us from it. I've come to respect its purpose. Tonight, though, I don't know what's going to happen. Because it's nearly midnight, and there is only quiet.